it's Thursday night. Thursdays and Fridays are my favorite days because I get to spend them here with you. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much. Don't forget to like and share and help us out because YouTube is suppressing us after we got our copyright strike. Uh, YouTube has decided to suppress the DG360, but there's no suppression. We don't care. We don't even mind it. We don't really notice it too much because we have so much fun. Doesn't really even matter to us. <laughs> let's get in to some Inside Star Citizen and let's see what is going on. By the way, we're having a giveaway, everybody. Zeus and Asulin down there in the Alpha link. 322 is right around the corner and available for testing now on the public test universe. But arriving with it are three newly flyable and drivable vehicles from manufacturers as varied as Apoa, Origin, and Drake. Let's find out more. So in Alpha 322, we have three new vehicles available, and they cover a huge range of both size and role, and we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about them. Let's start with the most exotic, the Aeropower Santokyai. The Santokyai is a medium fighter from Aeropower, but it doesn't follow the traditional medium fighter role that we see with human manufacturers. It has, for its size, quite a lot of health and classic Xi'an high maneuverability, as well as being extremely flashy in both its function and form. The idea with the alien ships is that we don't want them just to feel alien. We want them to feel different within their own rights within that kind of uh, alien spectrum. On the GATAC side of things, we've really kind of tried to make them feel quite industrial, quite strong and chunky. Whereas on the APOA side of things, we took more inspiration from the insect form. So we want them to feel a lot faster, a little bit more kind of aggressive and have a bit more attack in their shapes. When you first see the Santok Kiai, you'll clearly see the family lineage between itself and the Kartu Alm, which is the light. I'm telling you what, sexy. The Kartu Alm, when I first got into the Kartu Alm many, many years ago, gave me like the best vibes in the world. To see the alien ships really starting to kind of multiply and, and come into their own, so refreshing. I'm a huge alien enthusiast. I love like all alien designs, man. All of them. Like all of them, huge alien ship fan. Fighter from Aeropower. It's their kind of second Xi'an ship that they've made. Yeah, I heard and about it's that. It's really bringing kind of a big brother. They both have two stages or two transform states from the landed to the flight pose. And you see that very classic Aeropower flowering transformation from a more horizontal position to the more vertical flight and combat position. It's still got the kind of nice big transforming kind of That's style awesome. when it transforms from landed That's mode awesome, into to flight mode. That's but awesome. we've really tried to kind of push the Freaking alien amazing. aesthetics a little bit further What's this up, time, man? both Sal. interior and exterior. Good to see you, brother. One of the kind of more unique elements, I think, on the Santok Yai is its cockpit. Not just the, the space inside, but actually how you enter it. It's got this really kind of exotic, shall I say, seat that comes down to collect you from the player space. And that kind of... It's all about those handballs. You know what I'm saying? It's all about those handballs. All floats down and takes you back into your actual pilot position. One of the things that we really spent quite a, a bit of time investigating and kind of really trying to kind of nail the visuals on was the actual interactions with the cockpit. We wanted to make sure we weren't stepping on the Sexy. toes of the, what we did in the Gatax cockpit, Sexy. and it needs to be like its own unique thing. Ellen and the Austin team kind of really nailed that visually. It's got these really nice sort of slate buttons with all the Xi'an text in it. And one of the things we were really keen to do with kind of all of our alien ships is remove a lot of that human element. They may be made to be human compatible. Yeah, like that's one thing they got down right. Their alien ships are, are out of the park, man. They're literally out of the park. But we really wanted them to feel like their so native good. race was the, the so people well that done. built it. And that's who it was made for, us, number one. And so we've got these kind of really look. nice interactive tablets with all the Xi'an text on them. Love it, love it. Do have a number yeah, of paints coming out with the Santok Yai. Uh, they are still currently just being developed and signed off as, as we're filming this now. Again, we tried to kind of do something not, not necessarily kind of completely new, but kind of just push the bar slightly with what we're trying to do. It's, it's that kind of fine thing where alien doesn't always mean fancy and, and, and unique. Uh, but we do want it to feel a little bit different to what our kind of human races are. It's very obvious when you see the silhouette of the ship and when you see it in flight, what it is. But the paints is kind of that little uh, icing on top. And also it kind of gives that really nice read when you get up and close and personal with it. The Santok Yai is a fighter through and through. It really excels at that. It doesn't have any secret hidden features, but it does have all of our latest tech and features within it, such as weapon racks. 
personal storage and accessible components. <laughs> so this ship is really for those who prize maneuverability and position in combat. When I first saw the sand tuck, I didn't think much of it. I thought it was kind of plain, but like the more I'm seeing it move around, man, it's awesome. It's awesome. The firepower of the ship is pretty good for its size, but its real strength is its maneuverability. It's one so of that's very, the Yai. The Santox is one of very few ships I've actually changed my opinion on. You know, like, I, I, if I don't like a ship, I'm going to tell you I don't like a ship, and it sticks. The Santox, when it first came out, it was a ship I told you I did not like. Just said I didn't like it. Now I'm seeing it, I'm like, man, I like it. Available in 322, and we think it's going to be a great addition to our lineup of fighters and alien ships. Just like the other ones, it's great for those players who want that role, but just want something a bit more stylish and exotic. That's okay, it works. That's your opinion, bro. You know you're cool to, to, to spout your opinions here, man. Right? From there, let's go hey, from stunner. space combat and atmospheric combat down to the surface. Yeah, I totally talk about the Origin X1 time. series. The X1 is Origin's first hover biking game. It's their kind of answer to some of the other hover bikes we've already got from different manufacturers like the, the Nox, the Dragonfly. This bike was kind of developed alongside the 400i in its concept phase. And the idea was that this is that kind of classic, smaller kind of day vehicle that you can take out from your big, exciting explorer ship. Yeah, I'm not Those feeling two this kind one. of go I'm not hand in hand. One. It has its own little garage at the front of the 400i. Yeah, and it really excellent. just allows you to, once you land on planet, you can yeah. then kind of leave everything back on your ship and go out and explore and, and kind of chase down the thrills of the, the planet on a, a nice little hover bike. I'm sure the more enterprising of you out there will be bike. finding all different ways of getting these into places they shouldn't be, such as the upcoming distribution centers. Yeah, I'm not feeling the X1. I'm not feeling it. Santoc, I am. X1, I'm not really. Look at this dude. I think yeah, one of the road. things that's been kind of super nice to see as the bike's kind of gone through its development is really selling uh, the idea of this the bike being a hopper bike. We've got a lot of uh, VFX. This lacks like any kind of like, I just, I, I didn't like this one from when I saw it for the very first time. Now that I see it, I don't, I still don't like this one. And, and lighting going in from the teams, really selling it that it, it does feel like a, a bike in the future. We've got these nice brake lights at the rear. We've got the kind of front lights. And one of my favorite bits on it is actually the cockpit, the kind of like the, the driver's space. The dashboard in there looks nah, super. No, nah, no, nah, nah. I'm going to say this is bland. I'm going to say this is bland. This is like cornflakes. Like if you're choosing cereals, you don't go after cornflakes unless you have to, unless it's a health need. Like if you have to eat cornflakes because you can't put sugar on anything, okay, there's your X1. You got your cornflakes. That's what it is. It's the cornflakes of bikes. <laughs> Nobody likes cornflakes. Nobody likes cornflakes. And I really it's sleek kind of classic vibes, origin. Ship. And it all flows really sound nicely with the bike. rest of the shapes. All right. Sound the X1 on series it. is a series of three bikes that allow Origin to have their own edge of the market in terms of hover bikes and to have three different play styles within them. With the X1 Force, this is designed to aid in ground combat, allowing you to be on a speedy, small profile target with some shielding to allow you to <laughs> absorb a few hits and help engage combat. And then we have the Velocity, which Listen, removes the weapon. You notice it usually is the Origin ships that I have issues with. You understand that I, there's something weird about Origin design that I am not a huge Origin fan. Like, okay, right? You got me on the 890, okay? But when it comes to what? The design changes on the 300, banana, the new design change. Well, not new anymore, but when, when they changed it, don't like what they did at the 300 series. Old 300 series was like muscle car vibes, man. They should have kept it, but they were going with this kind of plain vanilla vibe, man. I get it. There's a lot of people that love Origin. I think Origin's best exemplified in the 890, and that's it. Like the 890, I'll give the 890 props. Anything else for Origin, I just don't know. The 400, quack, quack. 400, get out of my face with the 400. Quack, 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 quack. Darkwing Duck on the 400. The, the Origin tends to disappoint, Aether. That's all, you know, Aether. Uh, if the Origin fanboys want to come after me, let them come after me. I just, I can never, I really can't get into the Origin brand. Hard point and instead gains speed. Whilst tuning is underway at the time of recording, we intend the X1 Velocity to be a competitor to the Nox and both of those are designed to be faster than the Dragonfly, which is more utilitarian. So the Velocity is a great addition to <laughs> the ground racing community and will be right at home in nobody's all the gonna, ground racing tracks. Nobody's going to get in that. 
The basics one no is style. there no to style. provide an option for those basic. of you who don't like. This is so basic. This is so basic, man. Like, I don't know who designed this, if they were having a bad day. This is just like one of the most basic designs I've ever seen. And and the implementation of it now seeing it in physical form. It, it is bland. It's more. Like the Nox or right, just don't right, like tech. whatever aesthetic basic, you think micro Drake users basic have. Bro, but... <laughs> right, tech. Can we get some applause? I want to get some applause and an amen for Tech on this one. Tech saying this is the micro douche basic bro bike. <laughs> Couldn't agree more, Tech. Dead on, dead on, man, dead on. <laughs> and speaking of Drake aesthetics, Eight. that moves us nicely on to the last ship of 322, the Drake Cutter Rambler. Stun. The it's Cutter Rambler is our third variant of the Cutter series. And it kind of rounds <laughs> right, off the series right, as a whole. Right. Retro's right. Retro's like it's like it's trying to be a toy gun or a multi tool. Like like it's like a living, breathing multi tool come to life. Get get out of my face with that. I don't want to ride a multi tool. This is not my vibe. <laughs> Christy, on the other hand, well, she has to. There's, uh, as we talked about at CitizenCon, <laughs> the Drake Cutter family was always designed as a family of three, and we've shown you the base one and the Scout. The Rambler is the third one, and it is designed from the start to be the more fleshed out premium starter explorer combination of the three. I know premium and Drake might be a bit of a, a weird juxtaposition there. They are a very functional manufacturer, a no frills manufacturer. That really kind of is sold nicely on the interior space. We've sacrificed some of the, the rear cargo space for the larger habitation. This allows extra space for both a suit locker, a food machine, and somewhere to eat that food, and a nice little table to chill at. But even within that habitation, you can see how they've moved the bulkhead back one, they've moved the bathroom, they've opened up this nice space, and then they put you know, a seat, the desk, a little jump seat, and the bare minimum you need as a pilot going out and exploring our, our universe. We want to make sure there's visually some differences on the exterior. So we've got the kind of visual only differences, such as the kind of like the modified rear section. We've also got the kind of more functional stuff. So on top, it's got the extended fuel tank. Visually, we kind of lent into the idea of having your, your, your Winnebago or your camper van or whatever it might be. And it's got this kind of like roof rack aesthetic, but it's actually kind of stores all the extra kind of fuel for the extended fuel tanks. And then as with the Scout, We've got the change in the thrusters. And again, we've got a unique set of thrusters on a, a new nacelles on each side that really help kind of just break up that silhouette a little bit more variation with the Rambler being kind of a, a up, longer range or an extended range vehicle. I think having the kind of like the slightly smaller, they look a little bit more efficient on the engines rather than these great big kind of individual engines. You've got these slightly yeah, smaller, more of them this. individual thrusters. I'm very happy with the Rambler. One of the things that we kind of really tried to lean into when we were developing the Rambler was Drake's kind of mentality towards building their ships. I think it kind of ticked that box of exactly what Drake would do. They've got this chassis, they want to make a somewhere you can spend a bit more time in, somewhere that's a little bit more comfortable, but they're still kind of working to that Drake budget and design ethos. So I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out. The Rambler really takes the, the base cutter to the next level in terms of living on board. I think we all saw that when the cutter came out, but it was very much more of a camper van than an RV, which is what the Rambler is. So that's a wrap up of all the new vehicles coming to the Persistent Universe in 322. And as always, we look forward to seeing you all use them and abuse them in all different ways in the live game. <clears throat> Now, of course, Alpha 322 comes with more than just vehicles. There are structural salvage, openable cargo containers, new derelict settlements, new hairs for players, new maps for Arena Commander, and more. But since this is our last episode of the year, we have a tradition here at ISC of looking back at everything that's happened the last 12 months and reliving some of our favorite moments. And there was a lot that did happen. Uh, uh, many people out there that are reporting on Star Citizen would tell you that essentially this is what happened the entire year. There's so many content creators that were bitching and moaning about how there was no progress, that this is exactly all you got from Star Citizen, just a blank screen. But no, you actually got quite a bit. You were lied to. <laughs> you were all lied to. And, well, look, 2023 was good. Great even if you gloss over that little rough patch in the middle there. But heading into the new year, 
All that I can really think about is everything that's on the horizon <laughs> right, right, right. that's about right. to make 2024 the biggest and baddest year of our project yet. So if it's all right with you, I'd like to indulge myself, maybe switch out my CIG cap and put my backer hat on and tell you what has me excited about this next year for the Persistent Universe in a segment that I'm calling Disco Lando's Star Citizen 2020 Forecast. Now, without talking specific dates, let's discuss what's being targeted and currently on track for release in just the first half of 2024, starting with Master Modes, the new way to pilot and operate ships we've been discussing since CitizenCon 2952. Now, whether that's every ship or a staggered rollout of groups of vehicles depends on how work progresses, but it's a major change to the way spaceships operate in the persistent universe, and you can be sure that we'll update on it more when the time comes. And of course, when your ships aren't in flight, they can be stored in the newly persistent hangars that are arriving with freight elevators, freight kiosks, and the new cargo transaction system that we've shared on both ISC and yep. this year's CitizenCon. Yep. Yep. Now, all combined, they form the next major evolution of cargo careers and will also have far-reaching, broader implications for the entire Star Citizen experience. And then outside yep. of vehicles and hangars, there's also a variety of FPS combat improvements coming to the first half of 2024 with improvements to reloading, the weapon wear and misfire system, scopes and dynamic crosshairs and charge and drain, and even more we'll be able to show you once we return in the new year. And then outside of strictly FPS combat, there are new player character features coming like the updates to the EVA system, the visor and lens system, loot screens, default item interactions and the personal interaction system, and there's even new shopping and mission apps in development now. Awesome. And while we're talking about apps, the first half of 2024 is also currently scheduled to see the arrival of our new character customizer with Saw things like yeah. tattoos, piercings, Soul Soul scars, Soul and yes, Virginia, it's true, beards. Now, okay. As for how Soul many patches. and of what kind, only Andre knows for sure. But you can bet we're going to ask them sometime around so March. Patches. And I then, so of course, patches. if you're in game, there's also a little thing called Moby Glass and an awfully Slick. big thing called Star Map. They're Slick. both getting their big updates in the first half of next year. First half next year. First half next year. First half. 2024 is going to trailblaze, man. 2024 is going to be a big year. I got, I got a good vibe about 2024 for Star Citizen. I feel like they're going to trailblaze it up in 2024 for real. And have I mentioned those enormous distribution centers that'll be the new microcosm homes for every gameplay and mission feature that exists in Star Citizen, as well as the four, five, six, let's just say several new and updated vehicles that are making their way to the persistent universe in just the first six months of 2024? I did, just now. I can check those off. Whew. Okay, so real talk, CIG hat back on. Now. You're probably looking at your screen and saying to yourself, uh, what about Pyro and 4.0? Well, don't fret. The things that we just covered are those that aren't too dependent on continuing foundational tech work like server meshing. So we feel pretty confident in targeting everything that we just shared for the first six months. But when it comes to something as enormous as the complete Pyro system in Alpha 4.0, well, that's where the new preview channel comes into play. Now that said, Alpha 4.0 is currently targeting a summer 2024 release, but that won't mean that you have to wait until then to play it or learn more about it. That's because in 2024, we'll continue doing play tests like the one we just completed, and you'll be able to follow along with its development firsthand on the preview channel. That's the planets, moons, space stations, settlements, and outlaw lifestyle that comes within the Pyro system, but also an entire host of additional new features, content, and quality of life improvements like, oh, I don't know, fully functional jump points, the new quantum travel system, new vehicle hiding MFD work, resource management, hacking, and much, much more, all being worked on in tandem. The preview channel will let you and us test 4.0 together while maintaining the stability of the persistent universe with all those other great additions we just discussed. And then in the summer of 2024, two become one, and we can avoid that thing that didn't quite go the way that we'd hoped. The holiday live stream? And then just because we're cheeky, <laughs> there are still some things better left for you to discover on your own. And don't forget, we yep. haven't even talked about the back yep, half either. of the year yet. All in all, 2024 is shaping up to be the watershed year for Star Citizen. And if we've learned anything this year, it's that through the trials of 318 to the successes of CitizenCon and everything in between before that and coming up next, 
Star Citizen is a project that continues to iterate, to evolve, and to embody an experience you simply can't find anywhere else, whether that's in the universe or within our community that makes all this possible. So thank you for helping us reach the heights that we have and buckle up for the journey still ahead. We're in for one hell of a year. Yeah, for Inside be Star one. Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you. <clears throat> and we'll see you all here next year. 24, 25, 26. These next three years are going to be like uh, <laughs> a new hope. Empire Strikes Back. So if it's back all right with you, I'd like to indulge Jedi. myself, switch out my CIG cap, and put my backer hat on. <laughs> all right well we we knew this we we all knew this you know you get so trapped in listening to people that are click baiting and monetizing your eyeballs and trying to tell you the sky is falling that like you know we i think we're all pretty grounded here and we understand the project and the scope and what it is that they're trying to achieve and this is not a surprise to those of us who've been following this and seen the progress from the very beginning. So I'm glad to see that. Um, I'm glad to see that we're here. It's exciting. I really think 2024 is going to be a year. By the way, if you've been watching the Inside Star Citizen review, thank you very much. If you're on YouTube, like and share this. And uh, I look forward to reporting on what's going on in 2024 and continue to cover Star Citizen like I have since 2015. For eight years now, I've been covering Star Citizen. So I'm going to keep covering Star Citizen, whether I get one view or a thousand views or 10,000 views, because I love it. Because my heart's here. I love this journey. I love the progress. I see it. And uh, it's coming. It's coming. But, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a reality. There's enough people behind this that believe in this. There's enough positive people that understand that this is a... a a passion project, a, a work of love, man. Like this is the everything game. We know, we know what's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. No matter how many people out there are, you know, monetizing the hate bait and, and trying to get people to click to, to tell them how, you know, crazy or ridiculous this is. It's, it's a sad thing to see. There's so many people that are just <laughs> trashing it. And then, you know, when good things happen, then they quiet up like they never said it. And then they report on the good stuff. And then, you know, it's just like it, it's shameful. It's really shameful. So I, I'm very happy to cover this in a way that I believe is is rational. Uh, when there's problems, we discuss them. Uh, we debate them. We don't ignore them. And uh, we, we're adults, and we understand that eventually we're going to get the game that we all want because we are patient, and we will get there. We are the drivers. We are the navigators. We are the people that get you to your destination. Hi. Welcome to DG360. We are having a giveaway. Don't forget, if you are watching on YouTube, go down in the description, become an alumni member, be entered um, in our giveaway. And I think we should probably show that right now. Uh, at the end of this, let me, if you'll pardon me for the uh, intro here, uh, let's just get past this part and I'll show the giveaway video. Thank you. Let me just get out of the way and we'll show the giveaway video right here, Pepe, if you can. Here's what we're giving away and we'll be calling a winner, I think, at the end of January for this one. Woo! We got another giveaway here on DG360 RSI Zeus Mark II MR with LTI and Concierge Solstice Paint. Whoa, this is the quintessential bounty hunter. I can't wait to see who's going to win this one. And if that's not enough, you guys want more, well, you're going to get it. We're going to have two winners on these giveaways. Very special Gatak Sulin with LTI and Taumoa Paint. These brought to us by St. Eric. Thank you very much for everything you do for us. An amazing benefactor. Winners will be called January 25th. And to enter, all you have to do is become a YouTube member or a patron. Look at the links down below. Automatically entered every giveaway here. Thank you again, St. Eric. You are awesome. Consider becoming a member. And I can't wait to see who wins. Let's keep owning it up in a great way to bring it to 2024. Let's do this. Thank you, thank you so much.